Thank you, Tanaha san, for the introduction. And I would like to thank organizers for giving me an opportunity to give a talk in this wonderful workshop. I'm uh, Keisuke Izumi from uh, Kobayashi Masakawa Institute and the Department of Math in Nagoya University. And uh, yeah, today's talk is based on these three paper of ours. And the last one appeared actually yesterday on archive. And uh, this talk, uh, uh, this work is uh, in collaboration with uh, Tomikawa-san and Shiromizu-san and Yoshino-san. And uh, as some of you know, yeah, all of us are uh, experts of general relativity. And today's talk is actually, yeah, pure general relativity. No, no quantum casting, no, no information theory, no entropy. But yeah, I think you can enjoy my talk because I talk about the area in gravity. And uh, yeah, area in gravity is important in quantum gravity. So in this sense, yeah, yeah, you 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 can. Uh, I hope you can enjoy my talk. And uh, yeah, this is the title of my talk: Area Inequality in Weak Gravity Region. And actually, yeah, we generalize the theorem uh, of black hole for the uh, Riemannian Penrose inequality in weak gravity uh, region. And yeah. Actually, our theorem can be applied to also strong gravity region. But the reason why I use this title is, yeah, I want to emphasize our theorem can be applied to the gravity region. I, I think this is surprising thing because, yeah, I mean, actually, the proving theorem in gravity, the, the, the I mean, the gravity region is difficult because, yeah, for example, if you consider a strong gravity region, we have many characteristic objects like black hole or minimal surface. So using such kinds of objects, yeah, we, we can uh, prove many theorems. But consider the uh, weak gravity region. This is almost flat, flat with small curvature. So the, the, this kind of geometry has less uh, character. So it's hard to prove the theorem, but yeah, surprisingly, we can prove. Uh, uh, we can generalize the, the theorem of black hole. Okay, so this is a problem of my talk. So I first, uh, I start with the, the basics of black, black hole physics and theoretical point of view. And after that, I introduce the, what the panels say. Then uh, these two are the introduction. And uh, after that, I e explain why I want to generalize the theorem. And uh, yeah, after that, I show our theorem. So because of uh, the, the time limitation, I do not show the, the, the proof. I only show the, our results and what does it mean, yeah. So if you, if you want to know the, the detail of the proof, please ask me later, but I have to go back after my talk. So if you want to know, please email to me. Okay. So let's go to the, the, the basic of the, the black hole physics. So as you know, yeah, general relativity is written in, in geometry. And if we have the sun, yeah, we have this kind of um, curvature of space time. And uh, um, uh, if we con consider the same mass with that compact object, uh, we have similar yeah, yeah, structure, yeah, I mean, same structure in, far from the source, but the, on the surface, uh, the gravity potential become deeper. And if we consider further compact objects, the, the, the potential become deeper and deeper, and we have black hole. That means, yeah, even photon cannot escape from this region because of uh, strong and deep uh, gravitational potential. And uh, the, the spherical symmetric solution was found by the spherical shoot. And we, I don't know, this is uh, the spherical shoot solution. And yeah, uh, so the, the our equal to the M is the, the, the uh, characteristic, characteristic surface, uh, but uh, this look, uh, uh, metric becomes singular, but actually this is not the physical singularity, as you know. And uh, yeah, the uh, causal structure becomes like this. So yeah, if we, uh, at R equal larger than to the M, uh, this becomes time and this becomes uh, the special coordinate, but if uh, we go beyond to the region where R is less than to the M, then the, the coefficient of, of this part become negative. So R coordinate become time. So the, the, uh, this is a right cone. So particle can move in this cone. Yeah. And uh, if we consider the inside of this 
to the M, then particle should go this way. That means there are, there are particles here cannot escape from this region. So, so yeah, this is a black hole. And actually, at R equal zero, uh, we have real singularity. Uh, I mean, the, the, at this point, this becomes zero. So the metric becomes singular. Actually, and actually, if we calculate a uh, scalar uh, uh, constructed by Riemann uh, curvature for the Kretzmann, Kretzmann invariant become diverge, then, uh, yeah, this is a real singularity. Okay, let's go to the discussion in 1960s. Then, yeah, now, yeah, so solution have a singularity, but people at that time think, so, so it, yeah, it may be not real, artificial. It may be because of the symmetry, but now you know, uh, yeah, but now we know this is uh, not true, yeah, because of Penrose. Uh, this is a famous uh, uh, Penrose singularity theorem. What Penrose say is, okay, so yeah, if we have the strong gravity region for the trapped surface is formed, then singularity always exists in its future. Okay, so from that, yeah, I explain what is trapped surface. So this is an important ob object in my talk. Okay, so firstly, yeah, in order to understand what is trapped surface, first I consider just a weak gravity region, and after that, we consider strong gravity region. And okay, let's consider just flat space and prepare a ball. This black circle is ball, and consider the photon emission from this ball. Then we have two wave front. Of course, outgoing area of outgoing wave front increase with time because yeah this emits outwardly like this so yeah in, in space time f uh, figure it is uh, draw in this way so we prepare both and emit photon and undergoing uh, area of outgoing uh, photo, uh, photon wave front increase but if you have a strong gravity even if you consider the outgoing uh, uh, a photon wave front because of strong gravity. Strong gravity uh, makes the space time shrink, space shrink, shrinking. Then, then uh, because if it, it, this space shrinking is very strong, then uh, even outgoing, uh, even the wave front of outgoing wave, uh, wave front is decreasing like this. So if this happens, this region is called a trapped region. So this uh, occur because of strong gravity. And the boundary of this is called a trapped surface. Okay, so yeah, this is a naive picture what Penrose say. So if you have a trapped surface, which is a region where the, the uh, outgoing uh, expansion yeah, is negative, I mean, the, the, the wave front of uh, outgoing uh, photon uh, decrease, then uh, after that we have singularity. Okay. Anyway, yeah, outermost trapped surface is called apparent horizon. So this is uh, the different concept of event horizon. We can define, I mean, yeah, kinds of horizon in different ways. Okay. Then, yeah, if this naive picture is true, and if you consider the particle inside the apparent horizon, then, yeah, even on boundary, photon cannot escape from this region. But probably anything here cannot escape from, uh, from this region. If this is true, then we cannot see this region from outside. That means this region must be inside black hole. So yeah, situation probably become like this. So yeah, we have apparent horizon. I mean, this is trapped surface and the black hole, uh, this must be, must exist in black hole and the event horizon is outside of yeah, apparent horizon. Okay. 
So actually, this is true if we assume cosmic sensitive conjecture. And I should explain, yeah, what is cosmic sensitive conjecture? This is what we say, yeah, any singularity created dynamically is hidden by event horizon. So yeah, now, yeah, we, we know if we have the apparent horizon, we have a singularity. And this, at this singularity is formed because of the many, many things gather together at one point. Then, yeah, this is, I mean, energy, this point is very high. So probably this makes you know, a very strong gravitational field. Then probably event horizon form around here. Then yeah, yeah, uh, this singularity must uh, must be hidden by event horizon. This is a cosmic synthetic conjecture. So yeah, then we can prove if this is hidden by the, the event horizon, apparent horizon is also. So actually, the event horizon appears here, not here. Okay. And yeah, using this, we can easily prove the, 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 uh, the increasing law of the black hole area. I mean, the, the inside of, uh, outside of apparent horizon, the area of outgoing null uh, become increasing. Because of, this, because of the definition of the apparent horizon or trap surface. So we can easily prove the, the, the event horizon area increasing of, of the pole. Okay. Sorry, just to clarify, the cosmic censorship conjecture was used as an assumption to yeah. prove the area of the event horizon increases with time? Yeah, yeah. Now, then what's the um, what's the conceptual difficulty in proving the conjecture? Oh, so yeah. For example, if the, the apparent horizon exists here, then that means event horizon you know, shrinking. So, uh, so firstly, what we should show is this relation between event horizon and apparent horizon. Actually, if we, Okay, we draw the same figure. Okay. So we have apparent horizon here, but if we have a singularity, for example, inside, and we have cut, and if we also have the singularity here and here and cut here, then if something go this way, I mean, these two are connected, I mean, if the, if we consider the manifold this connect to this way, then yeah, a particle here can escape from, from this region. That means this region is not the event horizon. So this is a, a difficulty to prove this situation. Any other question? So yeah, and yeah, I do not explain the detail of black hole dynamics because yeah, some of the speaker in this conference already explained the black hole dynamics. But I want to emphasize that area is important. Yeah, of course, yeah, area is appear here. So area is entropy in black hole dynamics, some dynamics. And this structure is important, the, the area increasing law. I mean, the, the, the second law of some dynamics. So in this sense, area is important in, in gravitational system. Okay. So yeah, let's go to the, the second section, okay. So here I explain what Penrose said. Actually, yeah, uh, Penrose want to uh, check the, the cosmic sensitive conjecture and he uh, introduces his inequality. Actually, this inequality is through conjecture. And after that, I introduce another version of Penrose inequality called Riemannian Penrose inequality. This was proved already. Firstly, I explained the, the Penrose discussion. So under cosmic sensitive conjecture, we have the, the area increasing growth. Okay, then yeah, and 
suppose the dynamics uh, always uh, dynamics is always settled, and the final stage it must be stationary or static black hole. That is a uh, Schwarzschild or a car because of the uniqueness theory of black hole. Then, yeah, upper bound is fixed by this way. Actually, yeah, the, the area of a car with this, uh, is a, if less than uh, area of Schwarzschild with the fixing the area mass. So we have upper bound, this is final stage. And because of uh, area increasing row, the, the, uh, the graph should be like this. I mean, I mean, area is increasing with time. So the graph should be like this and we have upper bound. So di at, dynamic, at the dynamical stage, the area of event horizon should be less than this value. And okay, and again, we use the cosmic statistic conjecture and we have this situation and apparent horizon exists inside event horizon. So yeah, area of apparent horizon uh, would be smaller than the uh, event horizon, uh, area of event horizon. So we have this inequality and uh, combine this inequality, we have this inequality for apparent horizon. Okay, this, this, this inequality, I mean, without this one, huh, is called Penrose inequality. But actually this is a silly conjecture. And yeah, Penrose introduced this uh, con conjecture uh, to, to verify the, uh, his uh, cosmic sensitivity to conjecture. I mean, this if this always occur, then yeah, this is a strong evidence of the cosmic sensitivity conjecture. But I should explain why uh, he consider apparent horizon, not event horizon. Actually, yeah, event horizon have the stronger inequality. See? You may think event horizon is better, but actually not. So, and the reason is related to the the the, the black hole uh, related to the black hole evaporation discussion. So, let's go back to the definition of event horizon. So, event horizon is defined as a region. I mean, I mean, or well, black hole is defined as a region where we can never observe. Okay. So, yeah, that means yeah. Uh, in mathematically, the uh, black hole is a reason, a region, uh, which is not causally uh, connected to future and infinity. So yeah, prepare future and infinity and uh, consider the, the causal region. I mean, consider the, the, the curve, causal curve to test. Then we can define uh, black hole. That means without solving time evolution, we never fix the position of the event horizon. So before solving time evolution, we don't know where is event horizon. So this is incompatible with the, the time evolution problem. I mean, time evolution problem means, yeah, we want to solve time evolution, but uh, before that, we cannot fix the position of the event horizon. So when we consider the, the time evolution problem, event horizon is not a good object. We should consider other object. On the other hand, apparent horizon is defined uh, from the uh, information only on the time constant hypersurface. Apparent horizon is just say, yeah, area or is increase or decrease. That means we only uh, what we only need is uh, the time derivative of metric. So yeah, if we fix uh, the, the, the initial condition at on time constant hypersurface, then we know where is apparent horizon. Then if we have some theorem uh, based on apparent horizon, without solving time evolution, we know we know some property of space time. In this sense, apparent horizon is good. Okay, so yeah, in this sense, yeah, when we sort, when we consider the, the black hole evapor evaporation, for example, yeah, this is time evolution problem. Okay. Event horizon is not good. Apparent horizon may be better, and uh, yeah, Penrose equal uh, no cosmic sensitivity conjecture is also the, the time evolution problem. Cosmic sensitivity conjecture means that if first we prepare as a regular initial condition. Then if the, the, the singularity form dynamically, 
then it is hidden by the event horizon. So we, I mean, this in cosmic censorship conjecture, we consider the dynamics and we want to, we want to solve the time evolution. But, but yeah, this discussion, say, yeah, this is uh, the area of apparent horizon. So we don't need to solve time evolution, then we can say something. Anyway, yeah, this is a statement of Penrose inequality. So yeah, yeah, this is an area inequality for apparent horizon. And yeah, he considers asymptotically flat space time with AD mass n. And assume the dominant energy condition. This is uh, the condition yes, uh, that uh, for any observer, energy is positive, uh, non-negative. And we, uh, our gravitational theory is general relativity. Then, yeah, apparent horizon, area of apparent horizon is uh, less than or equal to the area of shiva uh, field. But actually, this is still conjecture. But, uh, ah, okay. So, what is the motivation to uh, assume this, the asymptotically flat space time? Oh, Actually, it is difficult to prove, actually. <laughs> and yeah, actually, now, yeah, we consider uh, the, the generic boundary case, actually. Yeah, I, I have some idea, but yeah, I do not do yeah, complete uh, the discussion yet. So, yeah. Thank you. Any other question? Uh, so maybe you will be talking about it, but is there any quantum generalization of this kind of thing? Uh, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> this is fairly classical, so yeah. Yeah, if we have some idea, yeah, 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 please, yeah discuss later, yeah. Any other? So I had a question. Yeah. I'm out of uh, Oh, please, yeah. So would this prescription also work for a charged black hole or extremal black hole? Could you say again? Would this prescription work for an extremal black hole or a charged black hole with any kind of condition? Oh, extreme charged black hole case. Yeah, uh, uh, extreme case here. I, I'm not sure, but yeah, there is a version of Penrose inequality with charge, electric charge. Yeah, but extreme version, I, yeah, we cannot apply it, yeah. There is a version, yeah, including the, the electric charge. Thank you, sir. So, uh, uh, so do you say that the uh, area of the apparent horizon is related to the entropy of the buffer sometimes? Or... Mm, I'm not sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. If so, yeah, I'm happy, but uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. So, it, uh, is it related to the first or so even? Uh, I'm not sure because your sound yeah. dynamics is applied to the other needs. So, for, for example, in the quantum resource theory, there, is, uh, there are so many uh, resource major functions that mm. the monotone and the CPTP map and the Mm. It is natural to uh, there are many entropic quantities. Mm -hmm. So it, it, the area of the point horizon is something like that. I, I, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I'm not particularly physicist, but yeah, if you, yeah, some, some of you know, yeah, I want to know it. And yeah, if you, you, you know some interesting surface, I want to analyze it. So I'm happy if you uh, uh, suggest to me. Any other question? Oh. So, so if this energy condition plays a crucial role, for example, like uh, if can we depress this dominant energy condition to another energy condition, which is more suitable in the case of ADS? Oh, uh, hmm. Anyway, yeah, dominant condition is a stronger condition of new energy condition. So yeah, okay. Yeah. And yeah, actually what we use is okay, we consider some cut and we consider a time constant hypersurface. Oh. And uh, we 
we define kinds, some kinds of energy. If this energy is positive, then yeah, we can use uh, this um, Riemann and Penrose inequality. Any other question? Okay. So yeah. Now I explain the Riemannian Penrose inequality. Actually, this is a theorem, and yeah, this is a, the, the this is a statement of Penrose inequality. This is a still conjecture, but uh, it, it was proved in a specific situation, a, a special situation. Let's consider the, the space-time having time symmetric uh, surface. This is a very special space-time. But suppose we have uh, this kinds uh, time symmetric surface, then we rewrite this statement based on this uh, time symmetric uh, surface. Then now we consider the space. I mean, we do not consider the time direction, so we consider space. And the dominant energy condition and uh, general relativity gives uh, the non negativity of uh, three dimensional rich scale. Then apparent horizon uh, become outermost minimum surface. Then, yes, uh, we, I mean, pick up this uh, red, uh, red writing. Then, yeah, we can construct uh, this Riemannian Penrose inequality. Actually, yeah, this Riemannian is terminology of uh, mathematics. Yeah, in physics, we should say Euclidean Penrose inequality. Anyway, in mathematics, Euclidean is, means flat. So yeah, mm -hmm. this is uh, mass uh, terminology of mathematics. But anyway, uh, this is a statement of the Riemannian Penrose inequality. Consider asymptotically flat space with ADM mass M. And uh, yeah, on this uh, space, everywhere, uh, rich scalar is non-negative. Then the outermost minimal surface is suppressed by the, the area of Schwarz shift. This is a theorem proved by, uh, firstly, the general the world, and this, they discuss the kinds of physical discussion. And, and yeah, there is some mathematical problem, and it was through by Huskin Ilmanen. And Bray shows a different uh, proof. Okay. And I want to emphasize actually, this Riemannian Penrose inequality can be applied to any solution in ZR. I mean, previously, I only consider the case where that uh, we have a time symmetric surface. But actually, this theorem can be applied to any solution in GR in the following sense. So, yeah, now we consider the asymptotically flat space time uh, with AD mass M and the dominant energy condition and general relativity. And with this condition, actually, we can always take a maximal slice as a time constant hypersurface. Then this becomes uh, this, uh, this one, I mean, on this three dimensional time constant hypersurface. Then, yeah, we can use this theorem. So, the outermost minimal surface is suppressed by the area of Schwarz series. But in this case, actually, the outermost minimal surface is not coincided with uh, apparent horizon. So, uh, anyway, yeah, if we have uh, abandon to consider apparent horizon and uh, just consider the minimal surface on this. Time constant hypersurface, then we can apply uh, Riemannian Penrose inequality. Okay. So, any questions so far? No. Uh, 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 I have some questions. So, uh, are you considering uh, 4D Euclidean gravity? No, this is. Uh, you, User for, for the for the Lorentzian. Lorentzian, Lorentzian, but consider time constant time constant hypersurface. Ah. Oh so, yeah, now we consider three dimensional space. Mm -hmm. I mean Riemannian Penrose inequality is a statement in three dimensional space. Uh so that is a statement for some slides. Yeah, yeah. Ah, I see. So then yeah. If, if the space time is time dependent, then how how do you choose? Oh, we, we take the maximum slice. Maximum. Oh. We can always take it. Oh, oh, oh. There, there are proofs. There is a proof. Oh. And if we take this maximum slice, yeah, we, we consider the, the, the discussion on this three dimensional space, oh. then we can apply this oh, Riemannian oh. Penrose inequality. Oh. 
But the position of minimal surface is different from the, the position of apparent horizon in four dimensional mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. So, how, 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 what, what, what maximal mean here? Oh, yeah, the ex trace of extreme, extreme curvature is zero. Ah, ah, I see, I see. Ah. And uh, yeah, actually, the time symmetric means the extreme curvature is zero. I mean, any component of extreme curvature is zero. But actually, we don't need to take this one. And actually, if trace of, of extreme curvature is zero, then yeah, we, take, we can go to this discussion. Yeah. <laughs> I see. Yeah, thank you. Yes, uh, related to the previous question, but this minimal surface is defined for particular time slice. Yeah, so if this is satisfied, yeah, we, we can yes. we can use this so, theorem. So I think you're considering Laurentian space time. Yeah, yeah. So we can also define extreme surface, extreme surface. Yeah. So, co dimension too. Mm. So is that that's that. that I mean, related to this minimal phase, or does that correspond to apparent horizon? Actually, yeah. Actually, I, uh, uh, I I'm considering it, and probably, okay. Let's consider the extreme surface, and probably we can take uh, the slice satisfying this one. Then minimal surface is uh, coincide uh -huh. with the extreme surface. Yeah. Actually, I'm interested in this, it, uh -huh. but I want to, yeah, analyze it. Yeah. Maybe you need some old component of because the curvature is vanishing for this time slice. I don't I think much, so. Much, I don't... Much size is press of this external curvature. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I think that's enough. The con yeah, that's, in that's enough. But in order to discuss the, the uh, extremal surface, mm -hmm. if we take this uh, maximum slice and take uh, minimal surface here, then it is not coincide with. The, the, the extreme surface. So we <laughs> need to different slice. And the condition is satisfying this one. And if we have, if we can find the, the slice satisfying uh -huh. this, and and if there are extreme surface living on this surface, then it is to become mirror surface. Slice. So yeah. Not, not yeah. So probably we, we can take some, some particular slice uh, satisfying this and and extreme surface uh, living on this, this surface, then yeah, we can apply the money penalty Any other question? So, can, can there be multiple maximal surface slices? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Actually, if we have uh, two maximal slices, then the, the sum of them is suppressed by this, uh, so, uh, bounded by this, yeah. Some of them. I mean, if you have two two surfaces, uh -huh. two area one and area two, and oh. area one and area two is bounded by. Ah, I so, so maybe okay. So what I'm asking is that uh, so so okay. So there are several. I mean that the, the surfaces in the space time which satisfies uh, this uh, the vanishing. I mean that the extrinsic curvature. Oh, uh, uh, strange. I don't think so. Oh, the, yeah. If we you, fix you, the, 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 the structure near infinity, oh. then the, the surface is fixed if we take the maximum slice. Okay, I see. Any other question? Okay, so yeah, uh, let's go to our our uh, our work. Firstly, I explain the motivation. Okay, actually, yeah, first motivation comes from observation. Actually, yeah, yeah. As you know, recently many observation about the black hole are reported. For example, the, the, we have the, the the observation of the gravitational wave from black hole collision. Well, we have the, the direct picture of the black hole shadow. So probably it's a good time to explore the black hole physics. Now on theory side, yeah, we have many theorems. So we want to, we want to check this theorem uh, based on the observation. So, so yeah, these theorems are very solid, but, but actually yeah, most of the theorems assume the, the existence of a horizon. And yeah, for example, uniqueness theorem, uniqueness theorem, we, 
we assume the, the event horizon or well, yeah, Riemann penalty uh, This is not the uh, assume the horizon, but yeah, we assume the similar object of horizon. And uh, yeah, for example, event horizon is a part of black hole. I mean, this it is bound boundary of black hole. It uh, is a part of black hole. And apparent horizon exists in a black hole. And uh, yeah, horizon uh, or a black hole uh, is never without because of the, the definition. Black hole is, is defined as a region we never observe. That means, yeah, yeah, in this theorem, we assume something we can never observe. So we cannot check this theorem from observation. So yeah, I want to uh, generalize this theorem and uh, not to rely on horizon. This is actually the first motivation, but Actually, yeah, yeah, this generalization is important in theoretical, uh, theoretical uh, point of view. Okay, yeah, as I said, yeah, if you consider the, the black hole evaporation, this is a time evolution problem. So yeah, we don't know the geometry in future before solving time evolution. So yeah, we, are, we cannot use uh, the, the event horizon. So yeah, how about event horizon? So yeah, event horizon, uh, apparent horizon, apparent horizon, uh, exists, usually exists far from event horizon and very inside of black hole, if you consider dynamical black hole. So yeah, so yeah, this is not observable. And yeah, and if yeah, event horizon is important in discussion of black hole evaporation, then yeah, actually event horizon, on event horizon, actually <laughs> nothing special occur. I mean, in the sense of it's a time Time uh, constant the hypersurface. So yeah, if the event horizon yeah is important in this uh, black hole evaporation discussion, that means they are yeah we need a theorem based theorem based on this general surface. I mean, in the viewpoint of the time constant time constant hypersurface, this event horizon is just general surface, not special. Okay. This is our second motivation. And the third motivation is a kind of dream, but yeah. Anyway, yeah, I'm not a string theorist, but I say something wrong. But anyway, yeah, in string theory, yeah, some people, uh, I mean, black hole may be uh, described as some condensation or some, um, anyway, very strong coupling system. Yeah, I'm a correct. And uh, yeah, also, yeah, in string theory, we can also calculate the scattering amplitude. And uh, I'm not sure about, yeah, there are maybe some relation between this and uh, there are many discussion between these two. And uh, but go, go to the general relativity. This situation is uh, related to the black hole physics. And this weak gravity uh, situation is related to the, the Newtonian approximation of the scattering. Then, yeah, if we can, if we can generalize the theorem uh, with one parameter which controls the strength of gravity, then yeah, we can connect this in the language of geometry. And yeah, we have some relation between, the, between these two. Then yeah, that means we may be possible to understand the, the meaning of the area in gravitational system. Uh, in the language of scattering amplitudes. This is kind of my dream. And if it is possible, yeah, then yeah. In, in weak gravity region, we can uh, say, I mean, we can connect the geometry, geometrical theorem to Newton gravity and also scattering amplitude and control the, the parameter uh, tuning, the, uh, uh, tuning the, the strength of gravitational uh, both, then we can say something about the, the geometrical theorem of black hole uh, in the language of scattering amplitude. This is kind of my dream, but uh, anyway, yeah, this is another motivation. Okay, so yeah, well, I have five or ten minutes. So yeah, yeah, then yeah, I explain my theorem. So firstly, we consider photonosphere. Actually, this is a strong gravity region, but uh, exists outside uh, event horizon. Actually, this 
uh, generation uh, motivate, is motivated from the observation. So yeah, let's go to the observation. So yeah, okay, let's let us imagine the, the solar system. We have a sun here, and as you know, yeah, we have uh, us go around sun. Suppose this orbit is uh, exactly circular. Also, yeah, in realistic, this is elliptic, but suppose this is circular. And yeah, if uh, we consider a black hole instead of sun, the situation is the same. We have this circular orbit. And consider the, the inner circular orbit, then the speed of this planet becomes higher and higher. And at some point, the speed becomes the same as the speed of light. So yeah, so it happened at R equals 3 gm. It is outside of the event horizon. Event horizon is R equals 2 gm. So this is outside of the event horizon, but this is a very strong gravity region such that the photon can have a circular orbit. Okay. So we have some, we have black hole, then we have a circular orbit. Then we can consider many circular orbit of photon. This uh, forms a sphere. This sphere forms a photon sphere. That means, yeah, on photon sphere or inside the photon sphere, this is a, the strong gravity region, but uh, it, uh, located uh, outside black hole. But actually, this photon sphere can exist in fairly symmetric uh, space time. So, yeah, I want to pick up the property of the, the, the photon sphere. So yeah, let's uh, consider the Schwarz shield first and uh, what happened near the uh, photon sphere and generalize it. So we consider Schwarz shield uh, space time. Now we are interested in on the space. So we uh, emit this time coordinate and we only see this special uh, part. And uh, we take the, the R constant for relation then uh, calculate the, the trace of the x in curvature and uh, draw the graph. Then graph become like this. This is a green curve. It shows uh, the case of the uh, Schwarz shield. And uh, this blue curve shows the uh, case of flat space. And the difference appear here. Actually, because of strong gravity, this uh, trace of x in curvature is become an uh, increasing function of R. So probably this uh, catch up the, the property of strong gravity. So we probably this, this region is a strong gravity region. And yeah, the property is this one. And this is not a covariant form. So we write this in covariant form. And yeah, now we have a covariant form of the, the definition then we can generalize this definition in, in any space, in any space, any curved space. So we define this surface. So yeah, so probably this shows a strong gravity region, but outside uh, event horizon. Okay. Sorry, this is your definition of loosely trapped surface? Uh, yeah, yeah. This is the definition of loosely trapped surface. And yeah. does, is the boundary typically thought of as a photon sphere in the more general setting or? Yeah, yeah this, uh, this, uh, this, in the case of spherical symmetric uh, space time, if this equality happens, then this is coincided with this 3ZM. But in generic space time, there are no meaning of the photon, photon orbit. But probably, yeah, this region is has a strong gravity. So we expect this catch up the, the property of a strong gravity. Then if we okay, consider the closed surface, and if closed surface satisfies this condition, then we say this is a little surface. This must exist in strong gravity region. Okay. Then, yeah. I do not show the, the, the proof, but actually, yeah, yeah, we can prove this inequality. And yeah, area of uh, loosely trapped surface satisfying these two conditions uh, is uh, equal to or uh, suppressed by the area of uh, photon surface of the shield. 
and e equality occur only if the, the space is the same as the, the shimmer sheet. This is a theorem or a consequence of a conjecture. This, oh, this, this, is, this is a theorem. Yeah, this is theorem. Yeah, we, 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 I see. We I see. Thank you. Any other question? Okay. So yeah, we we can we now we have the the the, the theorem, not to rely on the, the apparent horizon or minimal surface, but the, the, this surface exists outside the event horizon, but catch up the strong gra gravity, and we further generalize this inequality in weak gravity region. Okay. Again, we consider the, uh, again, we run from the Schwarz shield solution. Okay, again, we see the, the special part of the Schwarz shield. And uh, we consider uh, this value. And actually, in flat space, this value become always zero. Uh, no, no, they have minus one half. This is constant. And uh, yeah, if we consider Schwarz shield black hole, the, this value become a uh, decreasing function of R. So if the, this value becomes small, that means this is far from the, the origin of the, uh, yeah. far from the, the source of, yeah, far from gravitational source. Okay, so yeah, small, if this takes small value, then that means weak gravity, weak gravity region. If this become, this value is less, then this means the, the strong gravity region. So yeah, we, we uh, write this condition covariantly, and uh, yeah, we define the, the attractive gravity probe surface, uh, which uh, is written this way. So yeah, if you, so yeah, this is written in covariant language. So we can define this surface in general space, uh, general space. Okay. And I explain the meaning of alpha again. Yeah. So if we take alpha go to infinity, that means, yeah, this alpha go to infinity because this is smaller than something. So if you go this go to infinity, it should go to zero. This is minimal surface. So alpha go to infinity uh, is uh, corresponding to the, the minimal surface. And alpha equals zero, means the loose little of surface and I mean definition of loose little of surface is this one this part is zero so this is zero is a uh, loose little of surface and uh, decreasing alpha then then we surface become like this for example if we take the alpha equals minus one quarter for example we have this surface something like this and the alpha minus alpha equal to minus one half corresponding to the the Sphere at infinity. Okay. Then, yeah, actually, I, I, we are succeed to prove this inequality. So, yeah, alpha appears here anyway. Yeah. Then, yeah, if we take alpha go to uh, uh, infinity, it's uh, corresponding to the the, the Penrose uh, Riemann Penrose equality. I mean. Taking alpha go to infinity, then from this k equals zero, and alpha go to infinity, this part become two gm. Then we have the remaining Penrose inequality. And if we take alpha equal to zero, then we have uh, this inequality which we proved before. Okay. So this is uh, our main result. And yeah, yeah, the paper in yesterday, yeah, we. Uh, generalize our inequality in a higher dimension. Actually, we succeeded to prove the, the, our uh, generalize our inequality in higher dimension of this but less than, uh, dimension is less than eight. And also we define the condition of uh, uh, this AGPS. Yeah, this is a defined version and all of AGP, AGPS is included in this one. So in this sense, this is a defined version. Anyway, in higher dimension, we have this inequality. And yeah, this uh, omega is the area of uh, E minus one dimensional unit sphere. Okay. 
So yeah, this is a summary. And yeah, and yeah, theorem of black hole is required to be extended without assumption of horizon. This is the, my one of the, my main main comments. And yeah, uh, property of surface are important in gravitational physics, and we generalize the Riemannian Penrose inequality applicable in weak gravity region. And this theorem is also uh, mathematically interesting. And yeah, this is our main theorem. And the other problem, yeah, higher dimension one is done. Yeah, I mean, appeared yesterday. And uh, yeah, now, yeah, we also consider the effect of electric charge and angular momentum. It uh, was partially done, I mean, uh, for the three dimensional space, we can succeed to, to include the effect of electric charge and angular momentum. But in higher dimension, actually, it is very difficult. So, yeah, this is a challenging problem. And uh, yeah, applied to the new Takanagi surface in area safety uh, was done by the, 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 these, these guys. And yeah, I, I, uh, I want to know that. I, I want to analyze the, the uh, kinds of generalization of new Takanagi surface. Yeah. And also, I want to know the meaning of this theorem in the language of Newtonian limit. This is a work in progress. OK, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much for a nice talk. And now the session is open for questions and discussions. Any questions? Could you explain the definition of K? In your uh, K, K is the, 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 the place of extreme curvature on Oh, in, even in your... two, two dimensional space on this three dimensional space. So, so now yeah. we are let me now we are consider the, the three yeah. dimensional space, yeah. then we can consider the embedding of two dimensional surface. Mm -hmm. So K is uh extreme curvature, trace of extreme curvature mm -hmm. of this two dimensional surface and in this three dimensional space. And your condition is at this K is this is loosely top. Oh, maybe this is better. So, so satisfy all all the points. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. So the, the how to use this is that okay, first we can take surface satisfying the positivity of the extreme curvature, then take the, the maximum of this value. No, <laughs> minimum of this value. Then yeah, this surface satisfy this condition. Then so, yeah. area is suppressed by. So uh, upper bound is the flat value, case of the flat value. Yeah, yeah. flat case. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So you can detect existence of yeah gravity. Yeah. Yeah. Kimaira san, please make your question. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I want to ask about your result in arbitrary dimensions. So your result is restricted in dimensions from three and eight, right? Yeah. So what is the technical difficulty to consider higher dimension? Actually, yeah, uh, in our ceremony, we use the, 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 the positive energy theorem shown oh, by okay, okay. Uh, Chen Yao. And uh, yeah, they claim, yeah, they succeeded to prove the, the positive energy theorem higher than eight, but it is not on journal yet and not only on archive so i'm not sure if their proof is correct or not yeah <laughs> anyway yeah because we use the the, the as a their possible energy theorem then it, this upper bound come from okay thank you very much any other question do you have also some analog second law for minimum surface under some, some sort of time evolution. Oh, uh, uh, under time evolution, some, some uh, minimal surface area is different. I'm sure, I'm sure, yeah. But you write some such a picture, I think, yeah. or in the motivation. Yeah, originally, yeah, yes, yeah. It's, yeah, in, yeah, we should consider, and uh, yeah, we should consider, but uh, so far, I don't have any answer. When is my song, please? Uh, 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 so you show this a G, a GPS in a asymptotically flat space time, and you you use the uh, maximal slice. Yeah. Uh, can you, for example, consider or generalize your proof to a constant mean curvature 
slicing. Who's fighting? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a good question. Yeah, actually, yeah, probably you know, you have, there are two proof of the, 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 this uh, uh, inequality. The first is called uh, inverse mean curvature flow. And actually, uh, inverse mean curvature flow can be applied to the, the ADS case, but actually we have the, the restriction of dimension and also the topology of the surface. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in this sense, yeah, yeah, using inverse mean curvature flow, we can, uh, we can, mm -hmm. can uh, proof, but go to any dimension, it's hard. It is come from actually, in conformal flow, we consider the conformal transformation metric and uh, deform the, the manifold. And uh, yeah, if uh, we consider just the positivity of rich scale, then we can keep the positivity of rich scale. But in, for example, in this case, it's hard to fix value. I mean, mm -hmm. and positivity can be controlled, but the fixed value is difficult to control. This is the reason mm -hmm. why we cannot do it. Okay. I think I. I'm thinking because it might be very instant if you can consider this in a mean curvature slicing because in that case, by thinking a conformal transformation, you can show this in a asymptotically flat at no infinity case. Oh, then I I also know. taking a conformal transformation, you can show a asymptotical ADS case. Uh -huh. I see. Thank you for pointing out. Yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comment? No, Mr. Please go ahead. Can you hand my question? I have a question about one of your dreams, uh, which okay. connects geometry and scattering. Uh, oh. what, what kind of relation are you expecting? So, for, for example, I think photon sphere can be understood uh, as a uh, in terms of uh, what impact parameter. And this, this I, I, I'm sure. <laughs> I cannot answer you before analyzing this part, but yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's hard to understand the meaning of, of the geometry in, I mean, it's hard to understand the geometrical theorem in the language of the, the uh, I mean, this kind of scattering, scattering amplitude language. And yeah, I expect, yeah, now we have the relation between these two. Mm. Then yeah, we can we we can understand the meaning of this geometry, geometrical theory in the language of Newtonian approximation. Then that means we probably know the meaning of our theorem in, in some scattering in classical mm. system. Then yeah, it, I expect it's related to the scattering amplitude, but I don't know how. Okay, thank you. Slightly okay. related. Uh, uh, go ahead. Could you tell how tight your band is? Uh, could you tell how tight your band is? How, how, how I mean, is it, does it saturate in some cases or? Right. I mean, Uh, how how tight ah uh, I mean uh, so yeah equality occur only if the space is schwarz mm -hmm. so this is I think this is very tight. Any other question or comments? So what is the reason why you refined the definition of GAGPS in higher dimensions? motivation huh? uh, reason and um, and actually I, I indeed i i, I did not i did not understand the uh, difference between the uh, original version of the oh, gps and refined version of the gps oh actually yeah the main reason is actually yeah this includes derivative of x curvature so in order to calculate this yeah we need the information around the surface Mm -hmm. But this inequality is written in the language of two dimensional the geo geometry, geometric variable and also X in culture. And mm -hmm. actually, this uh, I do not explain what is this, but this is the derivative, covalent derivative on two dimensional space, mm -hmm. or uh, I mean, <laughs> the space on 
SVS. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we can easily calculate this. We don't need uh, information around the surface. This is a main reason I rewrite this mm -hmm. condition this way. But physically, this is more un un easy to understand. Mm -hmm. This is com looks complicated. But this, in this sense, this is better. Thank you so much. Any other question or comments also from online participants? No. So about the final item in your summary slide, you wanted to seek for some interpretation in the Newtonian yeah. limit. Do, do you have any idea for that part? So far? Not yet. Yeah. I just analyze the concrete example and yeah, fast. But I do not have any answer yet. Thank you. Any other question or comments? If not, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you so much.